Hello friends, this video on hydrogen part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's talk about the first thing that is resemblance with alkali metal. The first is the electronic configuration. You see the alkali metal, I like the alkali metal here. Lithium, sodium, potassium kind. So if you see hydrogen, the electronic configuration is what? 1s1. For lithium, what is the electronic configuration? It is helium. 2s1. For sodium, what is the electronic configuration? It is of neon 3s1. So if you have difficulty in understanding the electronic configuration, watch the video on atoms where we have discussed the electronic configurations. So you may see the pattern is same, right? Pattern is same. So electronic configuration is same. So they have one extra element to achieve the stability. The use one electron, then get the stability. So the electronic configuration is almost same. Correct. The electropositive character. What is electropositive? See, the moment you think of electropositive, you should think of something called um, H plus, Na plus, K plus, anything which gets plus sign, right? There is nothing but electropositive. That means they lose the electron and get the plus sign. Correct? Positive. That means the element will lose electrons and get plus sign. Correct. Now if you see for sodium for example, if you put in water, make it aqueous, so it becomes Na plus and Cl minus, right? So this becomes Na plus. Similarly, for water also, if you do hydrolysis, sorry, electrolysis, if you do electrolysis, what you get is H plus you get hydrogen gas and oxygen gas actually hydrogen oxygen gas but this guy hydrogen gas is collected at cathode we will discuss this since it is collected at cathode that means it has electropositive character if you do the same thing for NaCl also you will see that NS and Na will be collected at cathode correct so this means it has electropositive. So what you see, H plus is a common thing. You'll see HCl also, right? Acid. It breaks into H plus and Cl minus. So this guy is electropositive. Right. The next is the oxidation state. So for oxidation state, if you see, if you talk about sodium, the oxidation state is plus one. If you talk about potassium, the oxidation state is plus one. So for most of the case, we have uh, scenarios where the oxidation state there is not plus one, but most of the case it is plus one. And if you don't know oxidation state, was the previous chapter where we explained oxidation state. So we have this oxidation state of plus one. For hydrogen also, we have oxidation state of plus one in most of the case, right? So oxidation state is plus one for both alkali and hydrogen. Correct. Both are reducing agent. Why? Because, see, reducing agent is what? Reducing agent is someone who can reduce or who can get oxidized, right? Think from this way. Reducing agent is something who can get reduced, who can reduce others or get oxidized. Get oxidized means lose electron, right? So something X becomes X plus is oxidized, that means you're losing electron. You know that alkali metal has tendency to lose electron because Na is not that stable but Na plus is stable and that's why you get uh, Na plus and Cl minus and so easily right because we have discussed this in the atom chapter that uh, Na has one extra electron 281 if that one electron the outermost electron is lost it, it attains the valence uh, sorry the noble gas configuration so this is more stable this is less stable right so this guy easily gets oxidized so it is a good reducing agent. So similarly, hydrogen also becomes H plus. And we'll take an example for this. For example, if you have copper oxide, you add hydrogen, this becomes copper and H2O. Right? You have B2O3, you add some uh, potassium, this becomes K2O plus 2. So here if you see copper is what? Copper is reduced, right? CO2, CO becomes Cu, 
right? So this must have oxidation state of two. And this is oxidation state of zero. So if you have issues in oxidation state, please watch the previous video. See, uh, this has from two to zero. It is reduced. Similarly, here also if you see this becomes minus six. This has become plus three, and this is zero. So here also this guy also got reduced. Correct. Because this becomes minus two, minus two to three, six, minus six, and this uh, total has to be zero. This becomes plus three. This also got reduced. So both have reducing capacity. Right? If you talk about hydrogen and potassium, both has reducing capacity. The last uh, similar property is combination with the electronegative element. So what is the electronegative element? So we have electronegative elements can be my chlorine Cl minus is electro electronegative element. Oxygen two minus is an electronegative element, right? Or sulfur is also there. There are a lot of electronegative elements. So let's let's take the uh, examples now. So uh, with with uh, chlorine, hydrogen makes HCl. With, uh, with let's take uh, some uh, alkali metal now. With sodium, it makes NaCl. So you see, both has uh, this kind of thing. With uh, oxygen, hydrogen makes H2O. With sodium, if you add sodium to O2 minus, so this will form Na2. You got two, two sodium. Similarly, let's talk about sulfur. If you add sulfur to hydrogen, you get H2S. If you add sodium to hydrogen, you get NADH. So we see similar structure, right? So when you talk about uh, electronegative element combination, yes, both sodium or potassium or hydrogen they combine in a similar pattern. Correct. So that's why you can say that these the hydrogen has a lot of resemblance with alkali metal. Now the trick part is it. It not only has resemblance with alkali metal, it has difference also with alkali metal. Right? So let, let's talk about that. It has some difference with alkali metal. The first difference is the ionization enthalpy. So if you see the ionization enthalpy of hydrogen, it is very high. It is very high. And this is one three one two kilojoule per mole. And if you talk about ionization enthalpy of alkali metal, it is low. For example, if you see for sodium, it is for ninety five kilojoule per mole. For lithium, it is five twenty kilojoule per mole. To potassium also it is low for one eight kilojoule per mole. You see, for ionization the alkali hydrogen is very high, and for alkali metal it is pretty low. Also, size and existence of H plus. If you see, the size of H plus is very very small. It it is a very critical property. We'll talk about the storage of hydrogen in that case. We'll we'll talk about this. The size of let me change the color. Size of H plus is very small, and that why we'll we'll talk about uh, a different kind of uh, uh, hydrides where hydrogen can be stored, and that they are looking for the potential uh, place to store hydrogens, right? So this is very 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 small, but uh, and also it doesn't exist freely. It doesn't exist freely. So both are there. It is very small, and it doesn't. Exist really. Actually, when we say S3O plus, that is wrong. It doesn't exist even in S3O plus or H plus. We just for simplification we write S3O plus or H plus, hydronium ion or H plus. But actually, it exists as H9O4 plus in such a complex form. Right? This is how we exist. Correct? S3 and S3O plus and all are just a simplified version of this, just to uh, make our life simple. But if you see alkali metals, size is big. One thing is there, right? The second thing is there. 
Na plus exist. If you put just sodium chloride, uh, the common salt in water, you'll see a lot of Na plus ions. And it exists freely. So that is one difference. The third difference is the difference in the halide property. So if you T is halides, halides means halogens, for example, you can take chlorine. So if you see HCl and if you see NaCl, we, we told that both exist, right? But the property is different. If you talk about HCl, it is a covalent bond. Why covalent bond? Because if you talk about chlorine, chlorine has seven and hydrogen has how many? One. They won't want, they don't, nobody want to give, right? So they'll just share. They'll just share. They'll just share like this. And let me put this dot here for hydrogen. And they'll form a covalent bond. Talk about NaCl, it has one extra electron. And Cl has again seven. So Na will give an electron. There'll be complete transfer of electrons. So it will become Na plus Cl minus. Right? So this is an electro, sorry, this is an ionic bond. Because the bond is because of ion formation. Right? There are two different ions. And HCl is gas, NaCl is solid. So if you see, if you talk about the halide properties, they have different physical properties. One is gas and one is generally solid. And uh, in case of uh, hydrogen, it's covalent bond because nobody wants to give. Hydrogen also wants one electron to achieve stability. Chlorine, or car, sorry, chlorine also wants to take one electron to attain stability. So both will share electrons and they'll have a covalent bond. Because of sodium chloride, there'll be complete transfer of electron and it will get Na plus and Cl minus charge. It will be a ionic bond. So if you don't understand covalent and ionic bond, please watch my previous video where we explain what is ionic and what is covalent bond. And how to get this. Now we have studied the difference and the similarity with alkali metals. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.